The European Space Agency will shortly be making its eighth long-duration mission to the International Space Station. Tim Peake from England will spend five months in orbit, carrying out 30 experiments on behalf of ESA, as well as international research projects. So we'd set up the Columbus VCA as usual. Named Principia after Isaac Newton's groundbreaking text on motion and gravity, the mission has a special emphasis on education. The logo was designed by the winner of a competition held by a British children's television show. We had thousands of entries for this mission patch competition and thousands of entries for the mission name competition, Principia, as well. And I've just been uh, amazed at how everybody really has been engrossed and excited by this mission. Peak will be launched from Baikonur in Kazakhstan on board a Russian Soyuz vehicle. He's scheduled to reach the ISS in around six hours. He'll be traveling alongside NASA's Tim Kopra and Russian cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko, with whom he acted as backup crew for the Expedition 44 flight back in July. Once on board, they'll be involved with the day-to-day -day running of the station, a hugely complex procedure, which requires every crew member to be flexible in their responsibilities. So much of our work up there is determined by the visiting vehicle traffic and that's a very dynamic phase because we're not quite sure exactly which vehicles are going to arrive when and we get trained on how to do tasks that, that may be planned six months ahead of our mission and maybe plan six months after our mission, so that should there be some flex and those activities fall within our increment, then we're trained and we're ready to do those as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Tim Peake's schedule of experiments includes studies in material science, physiology and astrobiology. The results will have important implications for industry and medicine back on Earth, and will also play a role in developing future spaceflight missions. Educational aspects of Principia are focused on participation, which includes schoolchildren being invited to design data collecting apps and communicate with Peak using amateur radio. Spending you know, a few months on board the International Space Station is a really privileged position to be in. And so I'm very keen to maximize that opportunity. And as well as doing all of this important science, I also really want to try and share this mission as much as possible with everybody. And that includes educational outreach that will just hopefully open people's eyes to the world of science and engineering and show that there are some fantastic careers to be had if you choose those paths. For ESA, Brinkapia will mark both the first flight of a British citizen and another step in the continuation of its involvement with the ISS. Europe's regular presence in space means valuable experience for future missions and inspiration for those who will design and take part in them. Good to be back. We're trained really to operate the space station, to operate the payloads, which makes us very flexible. It means that we can deal with a number of different science experiments that can come on board because we know how to operate the equipment that that's going to be going into. When the Sockel space suit actually pressurizes, things do become much more difficult to work because um, you're kind of fixed in your seat in a very rigid location and it's hard to bend your arms and bend your fingers in, in fact. So even just sort of reading the board documentation can be quite difficult. But hopefully you won't be pressurized when you do a normal descent. Hopefully the, the spacecraft will come down without any problems and your space suit will be much softer, which makes it easier to move. All the documentations in Russian in, in the Soyuz spacecraft and of course all the conversations in Russian as well, which is the reason for us having all of the Russian lessons during our training flow. So much of our work up there is determined by the visiting vehicle traffic and that's a very dynamic um, phase because we're not quite sure exactly which vehicles are going to arrive when. 
And these vehicles bring up a lot of science. They bring up a lot of hardware uh, that is determines when the EVAs are done. Uh, and also they, of course, determine the robotics activity that goes on to capture the vehicles. So when you're not quite sure what the visiting vi vehicle schedule is like, you're not quite sure exactly what science and when it's going to be done on board the space station. So one of the things I've learned is you just have to be extremely flexible. And we get trained on how to do tasks that, that may be planned six months ahead of our mission and maybe plan six months after our mission so that should there be some flex and those activities fall within our increment, then we're trained and we're ready to do those as well. Spending you know, a few months on board the International Space Station is a really privileged position to be in. And so I'm very keen to maximize that opportunity. And as well as doing all of this important science, I also really want to try and share, them, share this mission as much as possible um, with everybody. And that includes educational outreach. So I've been trying to involve um, school kids as much as possible in competitions. And I'll be trying to spend as much as my free time in the evenings and at weekends engaging in fun science competitions and other activities that will just hopefully open people's eyes to the world of science and engineering and show that there are some fantastic careers to be had. This was uh, designed by a 10-year-old boy in a competition um, in the UK and, and it's uh, an example of how you know we had thousands of entries for this mission patch competition and thousands of entries for the mission name competition Principia as well and I've just been uh, amazed at how everybody really has been engrossed and excited by this mission. Uh, that one won't. That one can't be operated by this switch. That one you have to operate at the light source because you have to turn that off and on. Some crews use that to their advantage. They leave that light on 24/7 for a night light. You know, other crews you know, don't see the need, so they just turn it off. It's it's how. and 6.0 trash bag pantry. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. That's good. I'll just put NPMA1. Sounds great. I'll call the 
just to make sure that we understood the plan correctly. Okay. Сейчас кухочки просто накинем, шапочки оденем, при посадке в аппарат, все с вас снимаем, задержитесь. Падает? Падает, да. Она нормально, она скачет от 6 до 11, да? Да, она управляется. to do is just use the ladder okay. careful and I'll just follow you and we'll sit down there we'll take off the mining yep. whenever you would be asked to actually either remove or clean or just inspect the filter mm -hmm. we would need to close the line uh, we have seen where to replace the filter mm -hmm. which valves you have been using we said you had valves here also in the bay yeah. that were exactly the same as the ones that you have in the starboard cone mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just so turning so we would set up the Columbus VCA as usual, to uh, the deck one, deck two area. specific P180. 